welcome subscribers, newcomers, and friends. Hey, let's go to the beach today. That's the awesome thing about being an artist. We can escape to our own worlds. I'm still here in frigid Mississippi, but I was dreaming of my studio back home near Tampa, Florida with beautiful beaches, and I decided to create this beach scene that I'm going to share with you today. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will to become part of the Monet Cafe family. There is certainly beauty everywhere in the world, but I have to admit, smelling the salt air and feeling the breeze of the beach, wow, there's nothing like it. This was a trip my husband and I took to St. Pete Beach near Tampa, Florida. And here I am in frigid Mississippi in the middle of a big winter storm. You can see the snow outside. I've packed my supplies that you see here really in two medium-sized boxes to bring with us to take care of my mother-in-law, who unfortunately has terminal cancer. And we're bringing her back home with us this week, and she's actually very happy about that. Now, this is proof you can paint on the go, and I've gotten much better at it over the years through various trials, but I know many of you can understand understand those situations. And art can certainly be like good medicine for the soul. Now, I'm doing a preliminary sketch, something I often like to do. I'm using charcoal pencil and a little sketchbook. This is a reference image of my own that I took while at the beach. And there will be a lot of real time in this video, even though I'm speeding up this sketch portion. I like to be able to use my finger to blend to get a little value study. And now I'll recreate that sketch, since I was happy with the composition, on a piece of pastel matte. This is a pastel paper that I really like. I've lately been enjoying working on the white pastel mat because it's water friendly and I can tone it or do an underpainting. And by the way, the products that I've been mentioning lately in my videos can typically be found in my Amazon shop. I have a shop with many of the supplies and materials that I use conveniently organized for you to find. Now also too, if you go in a particular category, you can do like I'm doing here and just hover over the little caption and I'll give you my input into some of these surfaces, paint products. I even have various studio tools that I use such as the ring light you may have seen earlier in the video. So it's a really neat and organized way for you to find things that I am using in my own videos. Now keep in mind, sometimes you can find these products cheaper. I happen to find this pastel mat on Dick Blick Dot com cheaper than on Amazon. So make sure you check that out. I like Amazon because I get the free shipping and sometimes that's a better deal. So again, I'm duplicating the sketch just to give me a roadmap for my next application for this underpainting, which is a product I like a lot but I need something to put it in. Once again, I'm away from my studio, so I'm just finding things. I found this pretty little cup. And what am I going to be using? Hmm, it's going to be the Daler Rowney acrylic inks that I love so much. This color is Indian yellow. I'll be using two other colors that I'll share with you as well. Once again, these are in the Amazon shop if you just need to find these products. So I'm just, I know I don't need much of it, so kind of like a dropper full maybe another one. No, just one. And here is my selection of brushes I chose to bring with me when I travel. I knew I wasn't going to be painting very large. Oh, and I had my little visitor, Jackson. He hopped up in my lap, which did make it kind of hard to paint. <laughs> no, I really had to put him down. So I'm grabbing the largest brush that I brought to do this underpainting. I'm basically doing a little tonal study. I did need some water. I'll be diluting certain sections of this. You may notice, like I said, the pastel mat is water friendly. Last or a few videos back, I literally did a watercolor underpainting on this pastel mat. It receives watercolor and these acrylic inks so beautifully. I added some water to it at that point. I wanted to do kind of a gradient of this pretty golden color coming down and also a little bit of that color in the sand. But once again, doing a bit of a kind of a tonal value study with some of these warm colors. I wanted there to be a warmth underneath the sand and in the sky, even though I'll be adding some cooler colors on top. Now here's the other acrylic ink color. It's called fluorescent pink. I happen to love, you got a little glimpse of it there, adding this color to the Indian yellow. You see what a pretty golden color that makes? It makes it a little bit darker. I use that to get the grasses in. And again, like I said, you notice how this is becoming a value study. I got my lightest lights in first, which was the sky and that little bit of the background of the beach. And now I'm getting in the darker grasses. 
I'm keeping my strokes loose and painterly at the stage and trying to keep a gestural quality. That's one thing I was trying to create in doing the initial sketch was to have movement and energy. And I probably should have taken the yellow down further. I think I stopped because I thought that was where the water was, but I end up um, bringing the horizon line down a little bit. So you'll see later how I make the sky a little bit more of the composition, but it ended up working. And now before I go to my darkest dark, I'm actually going to use just this fluorescent pink with just a tad of the next color, which is a color I love. It's the Daler Rowney Purple Lake. And this combination is going to give me a third value and even more warmth. I'm just adding, a, I think, just one little drop to this just to make it a little bit darker. And I'll use this color to warm up the sky a bit and add even more warmth to the grasses. Isn't this fun? <laughs> I love playing around with these acrylic inks. And I have the question so many times about why to do an underpainting. And I hope this will help others to understand some of the benefits to an underpainting. By creating these warm tones underneath the painting, it really is going to influence the colors, not only because bits of the underpainting will be peeking through, but also because the colors actually look different applied on these warm tones versus just applying them on the white paper. Now you can see what I was talking about where down below where I added that pink just above where I'm gonna have the water, and then also I added more of that in the upper sky. So I'm working some of the pink with a little bit of the purple um, down in the areas where it's gonna be a bit more shadowy. And um, also it works to just darken the value a little bit in areas and warm things up. So just like the sketch was a bit of a roadmap, this underpainting is also a nice roadmap and a beautiful beginning to the colors and the mood that I'm trying to create. I know you can't see my full setup here, but I keep paper towels folded right underneath where I'm working usually, because sometimes I'll rinse my brush or I'll dab off some of the uh, ink that I'm working with. Now, for the Purple Lake alone, just a, a little bit of half a dropper full maybe, and um, now this is gonna be my darkest dark. Isn't that just gorgeous? So I'll use this for the darkest values. Oh, I did a little no-no there because this is too dark to put in the sky. I won't have any of this in the sky. Also notice how I'm working with my right hand uh, if you noticed before, I'm, I'm left-handed primarily, but uh, I have found over the years that the more that you can um, gain the ability to work with your non-dominant hand, there are advantages. Sometimes just it's easier to get to from a certain side. For me personally, it's because I'm filming. A lot of times if I put my left hand over, I'm covering up more of the painting. Um, but the other reason, I think is the primary reason, is that often you can get a bit more gestural and a neat feel when you work with your non-dominant hand. Sometimes it just feels, um, you can make strokes that have more freedom and uh, energy and movement. So. Um, so that's kind of a neat thing if you want to try that. Now, sometimes if you're a lefty, you know it's a little easier when you're a lefty to work with your non-dominant hand. It's because I often say we're in a right-handed world. And often we just have to learn to do certain things with our right hands. All right, so the pink in the background there, now I'm reminded after watching this again, uh, is where the water's gonna be. That little white band you see there, that's where I had said originally, I kinda wish I had brought the sky down all the way, but I work with it and get it uh, rectified. Um, I think I was thinking one of the lines that I had Oh, I remember what I did. I decided to move the horizon line down. Um, I thought it was too high before. So with this darkest color, you can see where I've added the darkest shadows that are in the grasses. And I'm also kind of working them down to create the shadows that are being cast. And by the way, I know you can't see the whole reference image here. The sun is coming from the upper right. So therefore, that's why that one bank of grasses on the right-hand side has all those shadows at the bottom. And those pinks that I've made are the shadows, the long shadows reaching out. Now you see what I did there. I actually decided to add a lighter pink to the bottom part of the sky, and I end up blending it to not have that line there <laughs> when I add the pastels. Okay. Okay, it is pastel time, yay. Of course, I have let this dry. Once again, using my right hand here, just because it's more convenient with the 
filming and the way I'm sitting. And this is an example again of what I was saying about an underpainting and the benefit of an underpainting. I purposely left the sky. I didn't over blend it. I wanted that golden color showing through, even though in the reference image, the sky is blue. Um, and the golden color and all these warm tones is definitely going to influence the warmth of the painting. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing kind of a gradation, kind of like with the little golden value study I did, going kind of from darker in the heavens, getting a little lighter down towards the horizon line. I have a video about maybe three videos back now talking about color temperature. I was so happy with a lot of your comments. I, some of you said about having an aha moment and you did, you, it's like you could totally understand color temperature. So thank you so much for those comments. That lets me know that my efforts and the things I'm trying to teach are working and it's helping you. So I love to hear from you guys. So definitely comment. Let me know what you think about these videos. So now you can see just how gently I've glazed over this. And also, like I said in another video I did, the one with the roses, um, I used pastel matte for that painting with a watercolor underpainting. And once again, you know, this one was with acrylic ink, that one was with watercolor, and this pastel matte takes all kinds of mediums, wet mediums, just so wonderfully. So, but like I was saying, the neat thing about pastel matte is once you do the underpainting, it's already a pastel surface. You don't have to do anything else to add your pastels because it has, a, it's interesting. It has a texture to it that doesn't feel gritty like a UART paper or uh, a Sennelier or some of the other sanded pastel papers that literally are like hardware store sandpaper, but they're just prepared better and they're archival. You don't have to worry about them yellowing over time. Um, but this pastel matte doesn't feel that gritty. It almost feels smooth. And it's amazing to me that it takes the layers that it does with pastels. And uh, I really love pastel application on this. I like lots of pastel papers. And if you've been on my channel long, you probably know I like making my own pastel surfaces. By the way, I have a video coming soon of a surface I've used that I've never had any success at before. And it's another one of those questions that I get asked about all the time. So that's coming soon. I'm so excited. I, I really had some success with it. Now you saw me look at the two different color blues. I'm using a darker blue, the one that you just saw. That's going to be more of the, the water line at the horizon line at the top. Now water um, as the horizon line is always level. You want to make sure you're going to get that waterline level. So I'm getting it by hand right now and you'll see a little trick that I do later to make sure I have it straight and level. But water, if you look at it in real life, there's almost always a little dark band. Now not too dark. This I end up lightening it a bit as I add pastels right at the edge of the horizon line. Just a little thin darker value at the straight horizon line portion of the water and then it gradually gets a little lighter. So I'm kind of, I know this is going to have some negative painting in these grasses. So I'm just very lightly, a light touch working it in the grasses. And now I got my little bit of a lighter value blue. It's also kind of a neutral blue and I'm just gently, can you sort of see how gently I'm applying this? Still the pink is kind of showing through. It's giving that warmth underneath kind of like the golden sky. Um, now you can see also in the sky how that little band that I missed um, isn't affected because I, I really blended the pastels over that area. So I'm just gradually working this in and I'm trying not to totally cover up the golden parts of these grasses, but uh, just give, again, like a little bit of negative painting because it would be peeking through in some areas. Now, I say this often in my videos, uh, I guess I just try to be efficient with my pastels, but I try to use a pastel if I've got it in my hand and I just used it, where else can I use it in the painting? Not only is it efficient, but a time saver maybe, you don't have to pick it up again, but also I believe it creates a harmony in your painting where you have colors playing throughout the whole painting. And um, if you don't do this, uh, you don't want to do it everywhere, but a, a painting can feel a little segmented if you don't have some of the colors playing in other areas of your painting. So I know too, I think it was, I, it was years ago, I can't remember how long ago, but 
I remember, some of you new artists may remember this, I remember when I started painting, an amazing thing that happens. You start looking at the world. You start studying how things look in real life. And instead of just taking it for granted of what a color is or, or not paying attention to what a color is, you really start to analyze what's happening in nature. And I remember at the beach one time, I had, I had just started painting and I was looking at some of the shadows. The sun was going down and I was like, look at the shadows. They were the sand, in other words. It was blue, kind of like a darker, brilliant, gorgeous blue. And I had never really noticed that before, that often our brains tell us sand is tan or brown or, you know, a, a gray if it's in the shadow. But it was truly the most beautiful blue with my eyes. And I was just like, wow, I'm going to remember that. So a lot of times, and we can't exaggerate these things too, even if it's not super blue, um, but often sand is in the shadows, when it's cooled off in a shadowy area like this, the sand can appear blue and purple. Um, so that's why you're gonna see me use these colors in those shadows that are being cast from the grasses. I'm going to just gradually continue adding my values and um, working the whole painting. And that's something I stress a lot is try not to get hung up on any particular area. Work the painting as a whole and your painting will have more consistency. Your values will be more correct if you don't get hung up. Also, I think you'll have more freedom and, uh, and a beautiful experience. Often we can get bogged down in an area when we feel it's not right. And I really feel um, sometimes it's best to move on instead of overworking an area. Sometimes things fix themselves. We're, we're not seeing the whole painting and all the values working together. So often we can feel like a value is not dark enough and keep working and make it darker and darker. And then we're like later, we're like, man, I've really made it too dark. So that's one of the advantages of working the whole painting is you get things working together and they will be more correct and uh, I believe more beautiful as a painting. And it's been one of my goals lately, not to go too dark too soon. So maybe I'm just uh, preaching to myself. <laughs> um, I think now I'm gonna grab one of these gorgeous, brilliant blues. And by the way, my pastel selections, my, there it is, look at that blue. This is gonna be some of the sand. I will get back to my point about the pastels. This is gonna be some of the sand. I had kind of that neutral blue um, and, and things do get more neutral as they go into the distance, like those longer shadows reaching out onto the beachy area. But this beautiful blue that's a little darker is uh, going to be perfect for some of the sand shadows in this shadow side of the grasses. And you see, when I apply it on top of that pink, it almost creates a new color. I'm not sure if you can see it um, from whatever device you're looking at. Um, but again, back to the pastels I'm using. I had brought, uh, because I'm traveling uh, and I had to pack pretty quickly, this situation was uh, with my mother-in-law. Uh, was just out of the blue. I mean, we knew she had had cancer before two years ago, but um, we didn't know it had um, gotten as bad as it is now and metastasized. So I had to pack things up fairly quickly. So I was thinking, what's, what's the best um, sets that I could bring? And one of them was just literally the pastel. I have a little workshop palette where I put all my pastels in between paintings before putting them back into my studio set. And they usually have just the best assortment of dark values, light values, neutrals, you know, and all the various colors. So that's that's really a good travel set for me. So I brought that, I brought some different, I brought my Unison 120 half stick set that is an amazing set for almost any painting. And I t I've talked about it in a lot of videos that I've used. Um, if you're a beginner and you can afford it, I mean, these nicer pastels aren't cheap, but if you're gonna scrimp on something, don't scrimp on the pastels. They really do that make that much of a difference. The professional brands, um, artist brands versus student grade. Um, you'll get so frustrated with some of the student grade pastels, especially if you buy them at like those craft stores. I think one of the brands that's a student brand is called Reeves, R-E-E-V-E-S, and that one is um, definitely, you know, nothing against the company, but you know, if you want some good results, that's not the best brand to buy. I'm using some of the purples down here, um, but again, so the 120 Unison Half Stick Set, I 
think it's probably around three hundred dollars or something. It was it was actually sold out of a, some places for a while there. Maybe I've been mentioning it <laughs> so much. People are buying out the Unison um, uh, 120 half stick set, but that's a good set for beginners. And I always recommend buying half sticks if you can because you know you get twice the color for your money. I also brought a set of pastels that's still a fairly new set for me. It's the Sennelier pastels. Also awesome pastels. I love them. They're so soft and buttery. And it's the 120 Paris set that I got. I've been using those um, for the last few paintings that I've done and I just love them. So I know sometimes we can't always get what we want with these pastels. Goodness knows I know that. I've been juggling finances throughout my whole art career with life changes and you know just things you don't expect so you have to budget um, but you know you can buy sets that are smaller I've been mentioning the 120 half stick sets but you can buy sets that are 20 and 60 and uh, there's a little 40 Sennelier set that I really like a half stick set um, so you just do what you can and I also have some videos where I've created paintings with just 12 pastels so as long as you have a decent assortment of values and uh, that that's key you know make sure you have a good range of values and you can really get creative with color okay look at all these crazy colors going on right doesn't that look really crazy <laughs> and I'm always telling you guys embrace the yucky stage it is really what's going to keep your painting loose if you don't overwork things too quickly and I also often say I get the advantage of looking back at my paintings as I'm creating them while I'm making these videos and so often I like some of these beginning stages. This this definitely needs some more work at this point, but you know, you'll see probably uh, as the painting progresses that there are some stages where it's just really loose and painterly and I, you know, might could have stopped even sooner. I was happy with this final painting though. All right, so I've been talking for a while and you know, you guys might just wanna relax and watch this. You can always turn the volume down, <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna add some of that. Um, Caribbean sounding music here and uh, oh well let me say one more thing here right here what I'm working on I there's some other grasses in the reference image towards the back and they obviously have a shadow side to them too like the foreground grasses but what happens to value as things recede into the distance Do, does the value get darker or lighter you probably guessed it values get lighter so those little purple grasses I did back there, I'm not gonna make them any darker than that because if I did, they wouldn't feel far away. Now I'm adding a little bit of, you know, not so bright of a green because colors get a bit more neutral in the distance. Now I know I don't have any green in the foreground grasses yet, but I'm going to add those. So that little purple and the little bit of green that I added will give the impression that they're far away versus close up. Now I'm going to start adding some greens to these grasses and you'll gradually see how I am keeping certain areas a little bit more neutral and a little bit cooler. I'm not going to use my warmest greens until a little closer to the end and I'm also making some real gestural strokes with the width of the pastel so as not to get too many um, fronds or blades of these grasses too early. Keep it loose. Resist the urge to add all that detail early on. Okay, I know I said I was going to stop talking, but I just thought about one of the points that I was going to make about my pastels. I actually, at the end of this painting, made a little chart of all the colors that I used, and uh, I'll share a picture of that here at the end, but my patrons, you guys will, if you're a patron and you're watching, and if, if you're not sure what a patron is, it's from my Patreon page, and uh, I really didn't even know much about Patreon for a long time, and uh, I had some people asking if I'd make a Patreon page, but what it is, it's a way that you guys, people who watch this channel, can simply just support this channel for five dollars a month and trust me it has helped me to make better content and more content because of the the support and also it gives you some perks some benefits and extra things extra goodies uh, more instruction and it's a great group I get to know you guys better oh and I get to see your work when you work from these videos and you create a lesson 
I have you guys share it in homework albums and uh, I get to uh, um, see what you're creating, give you some feedback, and it's really awesome. You guys, my patrons, we're just such a, a happy artistic family. So uh, stay tuned and uh, keep watching. I will speed this up a bit towards the end or the video would be long. The whole painting probably took about an hour and a half. Um, so I've sped up the last part of this, but I hope you're enjoying all this real time. I'm trying to give you more real time lately. All right. I am really going to add this music. So enjoy. Don't go away. Watch to the end. And I will show you those pastels at the end.
want to show you my technique for getting the water line level. Once again, water always seeks its own level. It's going to be straight. It's just the way water is. It just lays flat. So it's a good idea to get a straight edge. And fortunately, I brought my metal ruler with me. This metal ruler is old. It's back from my graphic design days. Oh my goodness, when did I graduate? 1987 from college? Um, also, pardon my bed head. <laughs> I had gotten up in the morning to finish this painting and I did not get the primping gene somehow. I just love to stay home and not have to fix up. <laughs> Is anybody else like that? Now, I have zoomed in here for you to be able to see, but unfortunately the camera it keeps getting confused on whether to focus on my hand or my big old head. So um, pardon the out of focus, but I wanted to mention here, when I'm looking at, I had to get close because I couldn't see, literally. When I'm painting this water back here, it's another time where I say I turn my brain off. I'm just focusing on the shapes. I'm trying to forget about them being waves and how waves work. I'm literally just looking at shapes and colors and values and recreating them. Um, because sometimes we can get a little bit confused or overwhelmed when we're trying to create a particular subject matter. I, I always say our brains sometimes get in the way. Um, you don't always want to turn your brain off. That might not be a good idea, <laughs> but sometimes when painting shapes and things, um, it can actually be an advantage. Okay, so the painting was pretty much done at this phase, and I also, here's the final, I will show you the final again at the end of this, but I want to show you now my pastel selections like I promised I would. I don't that first one I put down I don't even think I used that one um, but I'm doing them I'm speeding it up because you can see it and then I'll show the photo at the end if you want to pause on the photo um, but once again my patrons you guys are gonna get a downloadable um, uh, attachment to your post and my patreon page but I'm putting them kind of in color families purples blues teals and uh, I usually, I don't know, those two were the same. That's why I put that little mark there. Sometimes I accidentally duplicate a color. Um, I usually do them when I lay them out like this and according, according to value, dark down to lightest. They're not always in perfect order. Now here's some of the reds that I used. Yes, I used reds and I didn't show it in the video, but I usually, these are my neutrals. Um, but I usually use a color for punch. There it is. Look at that punchy pink. If you'll notice in the final, there they are, um, in the final painting, you'll see in some of the grasses where I use that pink. Can you see it? And some of the pink from the underpainting is showing through. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little trip to the beach with me. I will be back home soon in my studio, and I am so grateful for all of your prayers, all of your warm wishes, and I hope you're learning a lot, and as always, happy painting.